you may have a jokester in your group that's went and unhooked it at the gas station on you. Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to launch a jet ski. If you're wondering why we're not at the launch ramp, I'm not trying to pull a fast one. There are things we can do here before we get started that ensure success at the launch ramp. So we're going to go through those things real quick and then we'll head down. First thing is the plugs. These plugs, they let water out of the hull and they drain. When you get done with the lake for the day, you're going to pull these out. So it's very critical that before you head to the water, you make sure these are in and tight. That way your ski don't sink. We do not want that. That's a, that's a bad deal. So once that's accomplished, the next thing we want to do is we want to fire the ski. We want to make sure the ski starts and runs so that there's no issues, no complications when we get to the launch ramp and we're not holding up traffic. So what we'll do is we'll take the ignition here, take our little keys, turn our ignition on. Okay, we'll take our safety lanyard. Oh, and you always want to make sure you have your safety lanyard. That's important. Get down to the launch ramp without that. That's a bad deal. Make sure it starts. Okay, that's a good start. So now we have everything we need to get our day started. I have my life jacket in the, the truck here and we'll head to the water. Everybody. I'm Jet Ski Jim's wife, Chris, and this is the tip for the day. When you put gas into your jet ski, first we have to locate the gas cap. Remove the cap. And he's always told me, righty tighty, lefty loosey, and we want to loosen it so we go left. And then we put it right next to the hole so we don't lose it. And most jet skis will tell you what kind of gas needs to go in because you need to put the correct gas in. If you put the wrong gas in, your ski might blow up. So consult your manual or the person who sold you the ski to find out what they use. So now we put the gas in and this ski is really old, so it takes the cheap stuff, which is usually 87 octane. You have to know when to stop the gas. And here's the clue, when it splooshes out, that is a industry term, then you know it's full. So you want to stop and put the gas pump back where it goes. Then we take our cap and remember before, righty tighty, now we spin it right and it's on there nice and tight and you're good to go. We're down here at the launch ramp now, and we're at the boat prep area. It says 10 minutes parking, but it's really not that critical. The key is, you don't want to be down here holding up people. Obviously today there's nobody lined up to be on the water, but uh, busy holidays, there'll be people lined up both directions. This is where you untie your ski. Now notice I don't have my ski tied down in the back here, but if I had a strap here, now would be the time to disconnect it. And you always check your, your plugs again because you may have a jokester in your group that's went and unhooked it at the gas station on you. So we'll put that back in and make sure everything's untied, ready to go. You have your life jacket ready to put on when you get down to the water and then we'll go to the launch ramp. Oh, very important. We don't unhook the front. We don't unhook this front hook and rope until the ski's in the water. If you unhook it now, if you back your ski down 
six inches in the water too far, it's gonna float away and you don't want that. That, that makes for a bad morning. Now we've arrived at the boat ramp itself. This is where we're gonna drop the ski in the water. Notice there's no parking placards everywhere. They don't want you parked out here because this is the very efficient part of the, the launch process. This is where all the, all the action happens. People get confused, people get overwhelmed. Don't be overwhelmed. No one's gonna be mad at you. If they understand you're new at this, they'll be patient with you. I think the biggest key to the launch ramp is in the evening when you're done, most people are out jet skiing until dark. If it's dark, when you get to the launch ramp, you want to turn your headlights off. When you back down into the water, your headlights are pointing right into the back rear view mirrors of everybody on the launch ramp. And it's very rude to do that. So always make sure you have your headlights turned off if it's evening. Otherwise, we're gonna back this in the water. We're gonna have the boat to where it's just barely floating. We don't wanna fight the trailer or fight the boat, but we don't want the boat to float away either. So there's a fine balance there, but we'll go ahead and walk through that here in a second. So we're, we're gonna go ahead and back this in the water here. And all you're gonna do is you're just gonna keep it between the lines, very simple. It's gonna be very hard to see from the Jeep or from your driver vehicle, how deep to go in the water. So it's not a bad idea to stop and get out and check. But like I said, the key is just to get the boat to where it's barely submerged. That right there is about perfect. So I have my life jacket now. You always wear your life jacket. Anytime you step foot on a ski, you have to have your life jacket on. I think that's a law in all 50 states. And it's a Coast Guard rule, I think. I have my hat on a lanyard, so when you're doing 50 mile an hour and your hat blows off, you don't have to go back and fish it out of the lake. Okay, got my lanyard, got my hat. We're gonna unhook our boat here. Okay, now we're unhooked. So in theory, this should easily slide. So see that, it slides off very easily. Here we go. We've made it safely onto the ski. We know that it should fire up because we've already experienced this today. So we're gonna put our lanyard on. Now this ski has reverse. If you have a ski that does not have reverse, you're gonna have to put your foot down onto the fender and push yourself off, okay? Or you can put your foot down on the axle down here and accomplish the same thing. But since we have reverse, we're gonna use it. Alright. So now every boat ramp's gonna be different, but the key is there's a place to tie your boat up. This lawn tramp right here is very simple. It's right next to our Jeep. So all we're gonna do is we're just gonna idle up. And because you carry a lot of momentum, we're gonna shut it off 10 foot before the dock. Then what we'll do is we'll tie the boat up to the dock. We'll go to our vehicle and we'll park it. Where it'll sit all day. We'll be in the sun, get some suntan, some sunburn. So we've been on the water all day, we're tired, we're sunburnt, and we're ready to go home. So we're back up to our 10 minute boat tie up mooring dock. We're gonna go get our vehicle, we're gonna back in the water, and we're gonna back in the water the same way we did when we unloaded it, where the bunks are just underwater. And then what we'll do is we'll take and we'll go drive it on the trailer. As you can see, we have no good line for the trailer. So we're gonna come around here and do a donut circle, whatever you want to call it. Whatever you prefer. We're spinning around 360 degrees. As you can 
see we're lined up perfectly with the trailer now. He is no throttle. The slower you go, the more successful this will be. guy will hook you up to the bow here if you're your own winch guy then now's the time to get off in the water and and tie up and wrench up and you'll ratchet the ski back up to the front of the trailer there Yes, I like keeping my traps straight. Okay. Now we'll, now we'll pull forward. As you can see the sign over here this is our cleanup area this is where we finish up everything and we pre prepare to go home it doesn't really matter how long it takes don't don't be under a rush because you want to make sure it's right so the next time you bring your ski out you're ready to go without any issues so the most important thing to do is you're gonna fire up your ski to get the excess water out of the engine it's very critical that you understand your, your engine is water cooled well your pump is also water cooled and you don't want to run this out of the water for very long because your pump will overheat and you'll cause damage to it. You at least need to get the excess water out of the engine because you don't want it sitting in there dormant. That's a lot of water that comes out of there. When you get home, you'll do this again blow the water out again because the journey home will bounce a lot of water around that you didn't that basically wouldn't have shown up now so we're all blown out we go, we're gonna pull our plugs and what that'll do is that'll let the ski drain the entire trip home and that'll air out until the next time you go jet skiing and then that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. And stay tuned, we have a lot more exciting content down the road. Thanks for watching.